Well, good afternoon. This is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting once again from Haslingdon, just north of Manchester in the UK. Today is Sunday, the 30th of January 2011, and it's very cold out. I want to talk today about the state of the housing market in the UK. We really, really, really got ourselves into a pickle in the past 10 years because of our attitude to property. In short, we all got greedy. Now, it says in the Bible, it says in the Quran, and it's true that whatever sin you commit will turn round and bite you in the backside. And greed is no exception. Look what happened to the MPs who were fiddling their expenses. Some of them are in jail or are about to go to jail. And there's one on its way from the House of Lords. They were greedy. Now what happened with the property market was that we all went nuts. And the people with the money, the banks and the billing societies, were lending to anybody. More the banks than the billing societies. At one time, very few banks were involved in the mortgage business. But when they did get involved, they went over the top. And there were examples, as you know, of banks lending 125% loans uh, on mortgage. 125% of the value of the property. So if you wanted to borrow 100,000 to buy a house, they would lend you 125. Very nice. So you could have a house and enough money to buy a car with and so on and so on. And this was uh, uh, encouraged by state agents pushing the price up um, and um, by all of us wanting to own property that was going up and up and up and ever up in value. But of course, what we forgot was that the only person who benefits is the person who sells his house and either leaves the country or already has another house to live in. He makes the money, but the person who sells his house to move to another house has to pay equally as much to get another house. So we, very few of us actually advance. And um, it's, uh, it's a pity that we didn't see this coming. We ought to have done. We really, really ought to have done. Now we're in the state, because of the banking crash and the financial fiasco which started two years ago, because of mortgage problems in the United States, mind you, um, people can't get a mortgage for love nor money. It's very difficult unless they've got a very big deposit and they're only borrowing, say, 80% or 75% of the value of the property. Then they can get a mortgage. Now, what is a mortgage? A mortgage, effectively, is a loan totally secured on your property. Not just the value of your property, but on the property itself. In effect, you give the property to the person lending you the money. He can do whatever he wishes. He can't sell the house unless you default. But at any time from day one, he can, ex he can ask you for, the, for, for his money back. Yes, he can. He can change his mind, so to speak. He has everything in his favour. A mortgage is effectively a 120% cast iron guarantee of getting your money back. Because you can always take over the house if they default and sell it. And it doesn't matter if you sell it for less than the person owning it thinks it's worth. 
As long as you get your money back, that's all that matters. So it's a very, very, very one-sided uh, arrangement. And I don't believe that in, on this planet it's right that one side of an arrangement, one party to an arrangement, should have all of the, the, um, the jam. I think it should be shared, the risk. Even if this means there's not so many mortgages about. Now, on top of everything else, usually the person lending you the money expects you to, you to pay for an insurance policy to cover him against any possible loss. In case, for example, you, are, you buy a house for, uh, for 100000 but it, it, when he um, decides to um, uh, take it off you because you've defaulted, it may be worth only 80000 You have to pay a premium to cover the possibility that he might lose and to cover that odd £20,000. So they really, really, really can't lose. Now what I would like to see, and this is a possibility worth thinking about, because what happens if uh, the uh, um, person who lends you the money throws you on the street? It, and this is likely to happen in many, many thousands of cases up and down our island at the moment because of the state of the, uh, uh, of the world and our finances. What happens is this. You get thrown out in the street with you and your family. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, really. But then, you, you're entitled to benefits. You can go in bed and breakfast costing maybe a thousand pounds a month or more. So, in, in effect, the rest of us are subsidising the banks and the billing societies' um, business. Now, why not have a mutual insurance policy which covers the, the situations where innocent parties, like somebody who's had a heart attack or something, um, can't afford to keep up the payments, which both parties contribute to, and maybe even the government. That way, nobody loses. And that way, we don't have thousands of people on benefits. Because when you're repossessed, oh, it plays havoc with the family. The kids suffer, the, uh, the marriage might break up. Oh, the agony is, it isn't worth it for money. Anyway, have a think about it. I'm having to close now because YouTube only allowed me 10 minutes. I will say God bless and cheerio. I say God bless while it's still legal in the UK to say God bless. And thank you for listening. Take care. Bye. All the best.